So this video is about uh, fitting an IPS screen to this Game Gear. This Game Gear um, probably had for some months now. Uh, recapped it a while ago, um, but even after recapping it, unfortunately the uh, screen didn't come back to life. I can get the game to play blind, but um, the screen just didn't work. So uh, finally got round to trying to fit a screen to this and um, got part way into it and realized that the the board itself was um, a little bit different from the boards I worked on before uh, and it wasn't actually listed as a compatible screen for um, a, a compatible board for the, the screen that I had. Um, so a little bit of uh, looking around on the internet and I couldn't really find anyone that had uh, um, said they'd done this before so um, I thought I'd make this video and just share what I did um, in case it can help anyone else. So this particular board is it's uh, an 8377398801 it's a twin ASIC board uh, and I believe it's uh, an early Japanese model. Uh, the serial number on the back seems to be a, a fairly low serial number. So I think this is one of the, the first boards that they did. Um, just plugging it in just to show you that uh, the screen is all now working. So this, this is it. This is me more or less having completed the work. But what I'm going to do is just go back and just highlight a few things as to, uh, as to what I actually did here. So it's um, it's a, a Chinese screen purchased from AliExpress. Uh, at the moment, just all in bits. I've uh, wired up uh, P1 to P2 there, um, just so I've got full backlight on. Um, all these wires here are fairly standard, following the instructions. Nothing's really changed. The ground, the uh, VCC wire and, and all the other wires uh, are per the instructions, no difference whatsoever. Uh, so that's all fairly straightforward. So over here you've got transistors Q3 and Q4. Uh, I'm fairly certain they're in a different place on the, uh, on the other boards. So I've removed those. These took a massive amount of heat to remove. Um, uh, and, and when I actually removed them, I had a, a component uh, fall out the other side, and I'll show you that a bit later. So this wire here, uh, again, different location on uh, most of the other boards I've worked on. This is uh, T10 to T11. So the instructions will say, uh, run a wire from T10 to T11. Um, fairly straightforward to do, it's just be aware of where it's located on this particular board. This one's a, a little bit different. Again, the instructions say uh, run a wire from uh, CLK, the clock point on the, the mod board, uh, and run it to FB1. Now this board doesn't have FB1, so I've run it to a point between these two resistors here, R13 and R14. If I just grab another board in my to-do list, this is another twin Isaac board. Um, you can see that FB1 is, is just there. So not a huge amount of difference, um, but there is no FB1 marked on the board. Uh, so just run it in between those two resistors. On this side, I removed the L2 coil. And uh, before I fitted the screen, obviously I removed the backlight and the two fuses either side of the backlight as well, um, as is fairly standard. Okay, so just following the instructions uh, around uh, what to remove. So the instructions say remove R33. Uh, R33 is there, so I removed that. And R34 over there, so I also removed R34. Uh, and R32 next to R34 as well. So I removed those resistors as per the standard instructions. 
The next ones is it says remove R30 and R29. So R29 is over there. And R30 is uh, just next to it. Also R41, that was removed. But I did remove R44 and R43 as well. Um, again, as I wasn't too sure what um, what effect this was going to have, it, I cut this wire. This wire is the 34 volt wire that feeds the backlight. Um, I decided to cut it. I knew I didn't need it. And I thought it'd be safer if that was cut and out of the way. Then there was definitely going to be no issues at all with uh, with that voltage getting anywhere near where I needed it. I removed the capacitor at C32. And then just below C32 um, is the component that fell out um, when I heated it up. Now that capacitor there is C33 which should be removed and I haven't removed it I left it in so that was one that uh, uh, I missed so um, thinking about snipping it but um, I couldn't really get underneath it uh, so I'm going to desolder it properly okay so that's that capacitor gone now this part that fell out um, not quite sure what it is but um, it's connected to that Q3 and Q4 transistor, so uh, I, I assumed that as as I removed Q3 and Q4, um, then this probably also wasn't needed. So I didn't worry too much about it that it had come out. I'm just cutting. Um, yeah, you can't see it. I, I did it off camera. But I'm just cutting the wire all the way back on the power supply 34 volt. Um, uh, so rather than leave it and, and have it loose and, and risking shorting out, I took it all the way back to the connector on the power supply. So I was happy that everything was working. I thought I would try uh, and sort out that backlight. So uh, if you remember right at the start, I had... Um, just jumpered uh, P1 and P2 on this uh, video here you can see I've got two cables running to the second and third pin on the variable resistor of the uh, LCD brightness so I'm just testing that now so moving that resistor allows me to control the brightness of the screen And I'm just making sure my uh, screen bracket fits okay. So I think that's it. I think I am ready for reassembly. I'm going to put all this together uh, and test it properly. Wait, where's my part? I want to take some selfies. Look. You can see it all. Can I take a picture? See. <laughs> 